Now that we're power back, welcome to some Stormworks Build and Rescue. I'm assuming a lot of you out there are brand new to the game because this is a complete beginner's guide to Stormworks. I'm doing this because although the Stormworks Build and Rescue community has been out there for a while and it's grown decently large, we are still gaining new members every single day. So, of course, this is going to be a longer video, so if you are looking for a specific tutorial or a specific part of this video, I will leave timestamps down below in that description. Anyways, let's get started here. Of course, if you are having any problems with that language there, you can click this language in your settings here. And if you do need to change around graphics, audio, controls, or just other general things, all of that will be found in your settings tab there. Um, after that, we do have a couple other buttons here, but the first one I'm going to jump into is this new game button here. So once we click that new game, this is how you're going to be starting out your first game here. Pretty self-explanatory there. And Stormworks itself does have its own randomized world seed type of thing, but if once you type in one number, it's going to give you the same exact island loadout every single time. So that basically means that if there is one small island north when you start, it's always going to show up north from that spawn point there. So I'm going to go into this side of the game mode here first, and we'll talk about the custom stuff in a minute. So of course, Stormworks does have a couple different difficulty levels. Normal, Survival, Hardcore, and at the top of the heap we have Rogue, which is currently the hardest setting in Stormworks right now. And all those settings are actually for the career mode in game, which basically means that you'll be building your own Coast Guard Empire, you're not having any of those really creative tools, and you are on a budget at that time. If you do kind of want to more play around with the game, building your own vehicles, cars, and whatnot, you can jump into that creative mode here, which basically unlocks a lot of things, including not limiting your money, unlocking all of the islands around there, infinite stock, creative tools, and just basic creative setup here. Now where this setup over here comes into play is when we're doing a custom setup here. Although these say normal and creative, once we start adding in some custom things here, both of these are usually going to change to custom. So if we say we want to turn on advanced vehicles, vehicle damage, player damage and whatnot, then this difficulty will start to say custom here. So I'm just going to turn on Sharks and Megalodon for right now and we'll come back to that a little later. We are in creative right now which turns on all four of these buttons. But say you want to do creative, maybe you don't want to unlock all the components. Maybe you want to figure out how to unlock them in a creative type of environment. You can turn off and on those. As well as if you do want to choose a specific base you want to spawn in at, you can do that here. I'm actually just going to stay at the creative base for right now. Another customizable game mode tool here is the day-night cycle changer here, which basically means it's telling you how long in real life time it's going to take a full day in Stormworks to happen. So the bog standard here is 30 minutes for one day in Stormworks, but you can turn that all the way up to 120 minutes or 2 hours or all the way down to one minute and the days will be flying past you. You can also change around the daylight hours, which basically means your sun's going to be rising at 6 a.m. and setting at 1900 hours there. So I think we've set up basically everything we want to here. We've got all that and we're going to jump into a game real quick and then we're going to jump back out to the menu. Of course, when you are starting up a game, just like any other game, We've got to wait for a little bit of loading. So the only reason I wanted to jump into this game real quick is to show you that saving tool, just to make sure everyone out there can save their game properly. With this save mechanic here, we can just call it uh, my save 2.0. Getting very fancy, or we can't put a period in there. Oh well, we're just going to call it my save 20, and we'll confirm that, and we'll quit to the menu. Of course, it will ask you or prompt you to save it again when you're going back to the main menu, but we already have a good save there. 
So why I was showing off that save feature is for this load game I wanted to show off real quick. If you do want to set up boats and whatnot or different vehicles on the Stormworks Islands, you can just save the game and load it up here. Usually pretty self-explanatory stuff. The multiplayer isn't too difficult to use here. If you are just joining a friend, all you have to do is click that join button. And if nobody's down here, you have to make sure you are a Steam friend with the person you're trying to connect up with. Refreshing this page should bring up somebody that's just starting up a server, or they usually are here already if they're running a server. Of course, if you want to host your own, you can set up a password, but leaving this blank will make it no password. So today we're just going to make it Stormrunner1. And I do want to leave a quick note about the max players. There actually is a little bit of a glitch in the game where the max players is reduced by one person. So say I set it to six players max, the actual amount of players that can be led into the game is only five. And the sixth player that tries to join gives a full server lobby error to their computer. So of course, now that we've set that up, we can load up a game. Say I want to load up the game I just started, I can do that here or I can set up a new game with a new customized game mode here. So now that we are loading up into our first game of Stormworks, we have our own character customizer here. So if you do want to change around your character here, we do have a couple different things to change around clothing, aesthetics and whatnot, and just silly stuff usually. You can change it around to maybe have a captain's hat, a police hat, and whatnot. I'm just going to leave my guy here. You can also randomize, whatnot, reset, and just exit out of this. I'm just going to click complete to save that character I've set up. And we are now in our first world of Stormworks. A couple of the controls I like to use from time to time are the time of day and weather. So if you override that time, we'll keep it around noon and keep the fog, wind, and rain down. If you don't turn these off, the time and the weather will keep going randomly, well the time will just be linear and the weather will bring these up and down between times. So now that we are in our first game, let's jump over to our map real quick. And since we are in that number one seed, we can just fast travel right over to this island here. Actually, excuse me, this is not the number one seed, I apologize for saying that. But if we all were on the number one seed, we would get an island straight up from that creative island over there. But this is the fast warping, or fast travel to a location. And you're able to do that when there is a house on the map here. So, it's kind of a downside to creative that if you do want to find a specific island, you either have to be able to warp there from a house so you have to be within range and have to have discovered it or you have to take a vehicle and go out and find that island yourself. There are a couple ways to figure out where that island is located on your map but I'll be talking about that in the future. So now that we are in our first game we want to get some vehicles out here. I am in the simple mode right now, but one of the things before we jump into that workshop, we have to realize what type of vehicle we want to spawn in. Uh, of course we want to spawn in boats and whatnot over at the dock, but I'm going to be starting out with the plane locker here, just to build a basic vehicle. And now that we are in the workshop, I want to start the quick and easy workshop tutorial here. And there are a lot of buttons, so don't get worried about not knowing what everything does here. You'll get used to it in a little bit after using it. So of course we have this basic inventory here, where we're able to go in, grab whatever block we want, dragging it down to this hot bar, and deselecting inventory. And now after that we can pull it out and build whatever you want. Of course we can add block to block here, and build whatever creation. Let's go along the top bar. Of course we can just exit the editor right now and that's not going to do anything with our creation. It'll be stuck in here right now unless we do load another one. If we do want to actually spawn in the vehicle we have the spawn button right next to that exit button there. A couple other buttons up here. We can start a brand new vehicle which basically means if we had built something previously and want to start from scratch it'll start us from one block 
floating in the middle of nowhere. Of course, loading up vehicles, saving, and uploading things to the workshop are made pretty easily from these three buttons up here. And while you are building, we have undo and redo buttons up here as well. And the select tool is a little bit weirder. The select tool is meant for basic engines, different types of things, wheels and whatnot. I'm going to grab an engine and a wheel for right now and show you what the select tool actually does for us. So when we drop an engine in here, we just see an engine. We don't know the stats and whatnot of it right now. If we collect that select tool, it'll go blue and we're able to select it and change around max power here. If we were in advanced mode, we would also get another parameter there. But for right now, we just get that one. As well, there are other components in Stormworks where you can change around different values with that select tool. For right now, I'm going to delete both of those guys. Let's go over the quick paint tutorial here. So of course, once you do click that paint brush button, we get the whole smorgasbord of colors over here that we can go and customize our vehicle with. If you do want to make your own custom color, we have the RGB values here so we can make our own color. So we want maybe a lighter purple, we can do that for our vehicle there. We do also have a couple other paint modes that we should know about. The paint fill mode basically means we'll just be filling up one whole side of a vehicle. Say you just need to paint the roof of a boat and whatnot. We can do that with that paint fill. And if you do want to replace a color, say you make a line down the side of your boat and whatnot. If you want to replace that gray with a snazzy red here, you can do that with your replace color. Granted, if you do also have some more gray on the other side of your boat or whatnot, say we also had some red over here and maybe we want to change this to black over here. It's also going to change all the other color you are changing to that different color. So just make sure you are aware of that. And the additive mode is a little bit different and weird. Say we grab a light from our inventory there and we drop it down here. As you can see, it's a white light bulb right now. Let's say we're gonna get a little bit more fancy with it. I wanna make mine, let's make them a dark blue here. So we can actually change the color of the light bulb to a dark blue. Or let's say tomorrow I come on and I'm like, I want it to be a red. Make it look sharper with that red color there. So now that is red. But of course you can just drop it right back into that white color by selecting the white and you can paint around everything with your other tool there so i'm not gonna deselect that light and talk about a couple of the other tools we have here if you do need to move your vehicle in any x y or z direction we have the base move tool here that does help out a lot the next thing we have to set up is our logic tool and the logic tool actually is going to be a big thing while creating vehicles here. Say you want to connect a button straight up to a light to turn on that light switch, then we can do that pretty quickly. Of course, another thing you can do with that select tool is selecting buttons, lights, doors, and whatnot, and giving them a name. So let's just say we just want to name that button lights, and we'll connect that up there. There are a lot of other logical components within Stormworks. That's something to get into another day. If you guys do need a full tutorial on all of the logical components within Stormworks, just leave a comment down below and hopefully I am able to get up to it in the future. So the next part, I actually need a pivot point here. And that's because we're going to be creating a second just piece of the vehicle here. A movable piece that isn't part of the hole here. So as you can see, if I hover over this main base here, that second part of our pivot isn't actually in that colored piece here. See, moving between the two grays out the piece that is not connected. So of course this pivot is disconnecting them two and this will actually pivot around that. But you can also have just base disconnect pieces from your vehicle so if you do want to reconnect them just building some blocks over to it and merging the two pieces together is a very quick way to connect some pieces together here all right the next tool we have here is our selection grid 
And although this might look a little bit daunting to use, it's a pretty simple tool that can help out in a flurry of different spaces. So of course you can reset that grid if it gets out of control or whatnot. You can move the grid with that X, Y, and Z values. But the biggest thing you can do here is copying and pasting, which is a really nice thing to do. Or if say you want to move just the roof of a boat or something, so you can move cut that and move it up, down, side to side in any X, Y, or Z orientation. Because if you use this move tool here, this would move the entire thing. Using that selection grid, say we only want to move that light and the base next to it. We can move and cut that, move it up a couple blocks, and whatnot. But of course, when you do use that selection grid, it becomes its own block. So yet again, these are two separate entities we need to merge back together. And the microprocessor, or the microcontroller editor, excuse me, is a whole different Wild West in Stormworks. If you guys do want to learn microcontrollers for Stormworks, I'll leave my tutorial video for that up as a card, but we're not going to be jumping into that today because that's a very advanced thing in Stormworks, I believe. Of course, we do have a couple other things we can set up. These are basic just tools and whatnot. Say, if we want to measure how long this is, if you look at your bottom right of the screen, it tells us it is 3 meters by 0.25 by 0.25. As well, we do have the worldwide view for this. We can see what it looks like out in the world here. Turn that off. We can take on and off grid lines. I just prefer for them to be on. As well as rotation labels. So say, for some reason we want to whip this upside down or something. Using those, having those rotation labels helps. Because now you can see we don't have any of those helpful buttons around. Of course if they do get in your way, that's an easy way to toggle them on or off. Also the direction arrows is something I like to have on here just to help out building stuff. As well, if you are building boats, cars, and whatnot, and are concerned about that center of mass, that is another thing that will be shown with that purple box in the middle of your creation. That is also able to be toggled on or off. And we can of course change around the camera settings, reset the camera, or go to a orbital mode there. And these two selection and symmetry planes um, they're pretty easy to use. All you have to do is select the X, Y, or Z plane you want to mirror off of. And of course you can use that button to move it. So usually you'd move it to the middle of your creation here. And now we can build out from that. And it'll make an exact mirror on the other side there. So I'm going to disable that. And the selection plane for this, all this does is give you a half section of the vehicle you're working on. I know it looks a little bit weird for a one plane little, I guess, platform I've built here, but when you build a car, a new boat, planes and whatnot, it'll look a lot better with that. Now that we know how to use our workbenches around the islands here, I do want to talk about our escape menu real quick. And we already know the resume button, save, load, settings, if you do need to change anything in the game. But I want to talk about these three buttons here. And they're pretty cool buttons. If you do ever want to cam stuff up around here, it does have a 3D camera effect for the game that you can use to cam around your world here. And if you are playing your career mode and whatnot, a lot of these things probably will be restricted from you or not able to be used. That, and especially third person, clicking tab actually does give you your third person there. The other two things we've got here, we've talked about the time of day and weather. The only two other things I haven't talked about are spawning tsunamis and megalodons. Megalodons, all you have to do to spawn them in is clicking that button and one huge shark, huge prehistoric shark will be landed into the water somewhere around you. The tsunami has a build up time, then it'll roll through where you are and a cooldown time as well. So whenever you want to spawn one of those in, you can. 
And in multiplayer, everyone can actually spawn in Megalodons and do the tsunami spawns as well if you are in creative and this is activated. The final thing I have to talk about is this mission editor. And that's actually something a little bit more difficult, but I'm going to take the time today to show you guys how to use it. So let's click on this mission editor here and it's going to bring us into this unnamed playlist here. So a lot of the things you can do with missions is spawn your vehicles in at different locations and whatnot and set up different parameters. Of course you can share these with the workshop but I use them a lot more for basic spawn in vehicles or setting up a challenging thing to try out here as well as setting up new boats for yourself. So we're just going to call this new boat one. And once you do name your playlist here, we're going to have to add a location. And I already know I am on the creative base, so I'm going to add that in here. Now that we have this creative base location set up in the editor here, we're going to go to edit objects. And now that we are in this world, we can click F around the map. So you hold your cursor somewhere around. Hitting F moves your center of focus, that little orange dot on the map and we can move around here. Of course, with the scroll, you go in and out, and holding that right mouse button moves you around. And we do have a bunch of different things we can add in here for building missions. Adding characters, objects, zones, vehicles, vehicle buttons, flares, fires, loots, animal, and ice. Now I'm just gonna show you how to spawn in a base vehicle. I'm just going to take one of my testing vehicles here and bring it over and spawn it in front of this workbench here. So once you put that down, we now have a vehicle on here. Say we want a couple people around that as well. We can put two characters around the fire truck as well. Now, going back to this playlist overview, we can we need to add a mission to this. Going to edit mission. We need to change this name and I'm just going to call it fire truck. After naming that mission, we go in and we add all the components that are within this mission. So that's the one fire truck and the two people. And adding a objective, we're now able to test this mission out. And that's pretty much the easiest way to get whatever vehicle you want wherever you want to. There are some other ways to do some better things with this tool as well. If we jump right back into that mission editor, we're going to bring that mission back into here and I'm going to start a brand new mission. And this one's going to be called Ping Island. Because I was talking about previously, there isn't a great way to find different islands. But one way, if you do want to find an island and whatnot, say we want to find the helicopter base, we can select that helicopter base editing objectives we can actually drop a ping on this base here. So one of the things I'm going to do is add a zone on this island here. And this is going to enable us to ask where this zone is for a objective or mission we set up here. Excuse me. So adding in a brand new mission here, we're going to go and edit that mission, calling it Ping Island. And after we write that in, all we have to do is add in that one characteristic into the mission here by clicking that and going down to objectives. And instead of leaving this as an empty objective, we can say let's travel to the zone. And we can set the travel zone as that ID4 we set up on that island behind us. And now that is done, we also can have markers set up to this. I'm going to actually name this Helicopter Island. After we're done with the objectives over here, we're going to go down to triggers and set up a pretty simple thing. I'm just going to say when objective starts and we're going to say show objective markers. And we're going to have to configure this and since it is one thing here, all we have to do is just tell it to use these guys, the helicopter island setup from the objective above. And now that is done, we can test the mission. But it still isn't actually showing us where that island is. So now once we go to map, going to missions, ping island, and you toggle the activity. Now it's showing us exactly where that island is. Uh, approximately 5.1 kilometers away from us. 
So we're going to have to use some sort of vehicle to get over there. So if you ever do want to find a specific island, say you want to go around and find maybe Komodo Terminal or something to use some trains and whatnot, or the main island or Mega Island, and you want to get over there, that is a quick and easy way to tell you where you need to go to find the house to that. Before I do send you guys off as captains on the high sea, I do want to give you a quick tip or two that I have learned to save you guys some headaches while building boats here. A really good thing to note is when you are building the hull for a boat and closing it in a full space with air under it is going to give you good flotation versus leaving it open is not. See when we spawn that guy in, he's got really good flotation versus bringing it back to the workbench. If we do open up any part of this, it's going to get a lot worse flotation. Because in general, when you are building a boat in Stormworks, Stormworks likes to have nice air pockets to realize how the boat is floating. And although this guy does float decently well, it is a light boat. If you try to build something that is open and it has a lot more weight to it, it's probably going to sink all the way down to the bottom of the ocean here in Stormworks. Once you have finished your creations and whatnot, you can take them out into the open world and drive them around. If you have downloaded something from the workshop, usually the creators will add in a small description of controls and whatnot at the bottom left of your screen. As you can see, toggling H there is showing and hiding the controls. This is actually one of my vehicles that I built a little while ago with a small engine and sadly a barren sail right there. But now we have the engine running holding down W and number one for starting it and we can put the clutch in to get moving here. Alright, we just gotta watch the temperature there. But controlling vessels isn't too difficult, especially when you have built them. When you do build vehicles, connecting together logic to the seat or the helm and whatnot, where you are building the vehicle, that's the controls you are going to be using to build it, or excuse me, to control that vehicle there. And depending on if that is a boat, car, plane, train and whatnot, a lot of them do have different controls. I would just suggest looking at the description of a creation if you are looking at somebody else's creation or if you're setting it up for yourself build something that makes some sense to you like say starting the engine is set to the number one button and your throttle is w and s or maybe your throttle is your arrow keys if that's more comfortable for you because at the end of the day usually the vehicles are are mainly going to be driven by yourself unless you're planning to put it up to the community. And although I am just scratching the surface here in Stormworks with all of the controls, mechanics, and whatnot, hopefully you guys are ready and set to build your first crafts to go out and explore this amazing world. Of course, if you guys do have any more questions and whatnot, you can leave them in those comments down below, and hopefully I'll get back to you as fast as I can here. But of course, this is where I am going to be ending this video. So of course, if you guys did like this, please leave a like and consider subscribing to the channel to stay up with Stoneworks and more of my content. But I've never been great. Goodbye. Some people need me and I need to go.